Bardo, hi. Thanks for uh, taking the time to be with us today. Um, what do you think about this collective group of men that you have in that bullpen? A lot of unique arms, but have, they've been so successful to start this season. Uh, hello, Alana. Um, yeah, it's a special group. Um, you know, with the new rules and having 10 guys in the pen, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot just as far as managing the personalities. And, you know, we've got really good pitchers who are hungry to go out there and pitch. And, you know, it's been a blessing in some ways because we've been able to protect uh, some of our high leverage guys, but it's also, you know, guys will go a couple days without pitching, but, um, you know, we've tried to be process oriented and it's really good when you have good players and good tough players. So uh, I feel blessed to be back uh, and have this group for sure. Yeah. You said blessed to be back. Welcome back. Uh, what was it about coming back here that, um, made you so excited to be back with this group of guys in this organization? Yeah. I mean, it's family here, you know, at the, at the end of the day, uh, New York was a first class place all the way around great organization, but being on the East coast and being so far from family, uh, really grateful to be back here. And, uh, so feel blessed to be with this group and, uh, you know, hungry to, to get over the hump and, and get that championship for sure. Some new additions since the last time that you were here, obviously Blake Trinan, uh, Joe Kelly, I believe, um, you know, a couple of, of, of new arms, Adam Kolarik. Uh, what's been your impression of those guys so far? Uh, tremendous. I think, uh, you know, when Andrew and I talked in spring training and Dave and Mark, and uh, this is kind of a unique bullpen for us because we've used to have a lot of top of the zone, you know, unicorn fastball guys. And we've kind of, you know, Petey's really our only top of the zone right-hander, and then we've got some left-handers, but we have, uh, you know, a, a abundance of sinker ballers for the first time in a long time. So uh, it's been really good. You know, they've pounded the zone, and, you know, we try to keep going back to the same things that, that we build this on, is we want to attack the zone. We want to make guys earn bases, and, uh, you know, the guys have done a tremendous job of getting strike one and sticking to their strengths. And, uh, it, like I said, it's really good when you have good players. What's been your opinion of the three batter minimum rule? Um, I, you know, I think that there's, there's uh, some science to it as far as the speeding up. Uh, I just, uh, my concern was early. Um, I was, you know, concerned about player safety as far as like, just, you know, guys are, are trying to work their way in. And with, you know, since we're living in the twilight zone right now with the mm -hmm. summer camp and all the stuff, just making sure that guys were built up enough um, you know, if they had to go back out, but, um, guys have done a tremendous job and, um, you know, I can't say enough about like BMAC and Mark, those guys were absolutely unbelievable. And Connor during the quarantine, uh, of just staying on these guys to keep pitching and, and keep staying in shape. And, and uh, it's a credit to the players for sure. And do you find that with that new rule, just in addition to the complexity of the arms that you have and, and that it takes a little bit of pressure off of Kenley? that he doesn't necessarily, I mean, yes, he's your closer, but there's so many moving parts before it gets to him. Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, Kenley's continued to compete and, you know, I'm really excited. We're, we're finding some things with him that we're putting into practice and, and, you know, he's the thing that's hard for me with, with watching from afar last year is I think the perception was is that Kenley had such a bad year. And, and I think he was kind of a, a you know, a, a little bit of a, uh, you know, his own greatness got him in trouble because he had a solid year. Um, it wasn't his best. Uh, he's worked his tail off this off season to get into a better position with his body. Um, you know, the cutter numbers are creeping up. Um, he's going to get there. And I really believe the thing that's so encouraging to me is that numbers wise, which we're not too concerned about because we want to be about process have still been good. And, you know, he hasn't even scratched the surface of what he's capable of yet. So uh, it's good for the Dodgers. It's good for him. Um, and we're going to try to protect him the best, you know, all of our guys, because our, our mindset is with the new crazy rules of, you know, one through eight, we want to make sure that, that we're strong and healthy going into, uh, you know, if we can get, get into one of those spots. Great to talk to you, Bardo. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank you. Next question from Jorge Castillo. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Josh. You mentioned uh, incorporating some things with Kenley. Um, what are those things? Just, you know, getting him back to like his hardwired throw, uh, you know, kudos to Kenley of just how much of a competitor he is. And, 
you know, trying to go out there and, and, you know, he's fighting a little bit, you know, the ball didn't have the same characteristics, um, you know, but kudos to him. He learned a two seamer, started throwing his breaking ball more and, you know, just trying to take a step back and, and, you know, he's a guy that's a warrior. And I think that the, the thing that people don't get is he always takes the ball, uh, doesn't run from anything. You know, he's put up great numbers. Uh, you know, he's a hall of fame player in my opinion. And I think that, you know, with him, you know, he, like I said before, he's been a little bit of a victim of his own greatness uh, as far as a year that wasn't what he's used to. And I think that, um, you know, I, I just am so proud of him. You know, the guy's, you know, signed a, a big deal and he's hungry. You know, he, he's not just sitting back on his laurels. He's coming out and he wants to be the best version of himself. And that speaks to Kenley's character and, and his work. And, um, you know, I'll put my money on him any day. You mentioned you, uh, you guys, you know, value the, the process more so than the results sometimes. Um, and the results for the bullpen have been great so far. But I'm just wondering if the calculus of a 60-game season sort of changes how you value process versus results just because you guys need the results maybe a little quicker. Yeah, I mean, I, but I, I don't look at it like that. I mean, to me, like, if, if you go about your business the right way, um, Dave's done a tremendous job of putting guys in the right spot. Uh, Mark and Connor and, and Danny Lehman have done a great job of, of, you know, talking through what's the best matchup for each guy each night. And, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to put guys in good positions. And like I said, we, you know, the office and, and the ownership have given us really good players. We've got unique guys, you know, we've got sinker ball guys, we got high fastball guys. Uh, you know, we got good left-handers that can get righties out. And that part has been huge with the three batter rule and, uh, you know, it's a special group. And, and, you know, as far as the process and the rush of 60 game season, like, you know, we can't win tomorrow until tomorrow. So we got to take today for what it is. And, you know, if a, if a guy needs to be down because he's thrown back to back days or he's thrown four out of six, like we have to take a long view on this and, you know, let somebody else step up and, and put those guys in positions to help. And, and so far everybody's stepped up and, and we'll continue to be process based. And that was one last one for me. I know just you're watching the games from the bullpen, but do you get the sense of the Padres? Obviously, everybody wants to win every game, but do they really want to beat you guys? Uh, I think every team wants to beat us, and we want to beat everybody. I think that they're a much improved team. Um, they're a dynamic, young, athletic team. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like, uh, they've played better than us the last couple of days, and we're going to keep grinding and keep trying to put the process in. Uh, you know, I think the thing that the narrative uh, of – you know, they're hungry to prove themselves. There's no doubt. I mean, they're, they're good over there and they deserve a lot of respect and we've looked at them that way. And the last couple of nights haven't turned out great, but you know, at the end of the day, we get to play them again today and tomorrow and we got to take today for what it is and, and try to keep moving towards the goal of being the best version of ourselves for sure. Thank you. Got a question from Ron Kavner. Go ahead, Ron. Hey, Josh, um, you've got guys who, whose velocity, multiple guys actually, whose velocity is ticked up and Caleb and Jake and, and some of these guys. How curious were you to see where your relievers would be when you came back, you know, for summer camp? Is there any surprise at how quickly they've been able to kind of get going here? No, I mean, that's that credit goes to, you know, BMAC and Mark and Connor who worked their tails off during the quarantine to make sure that these guys were still in a great position delivery wise. Uh, they were doing their work and that credit goes to those guys and obviously the player. I mean, you know, the, the, the whole driving down to the city park and throwing it against the net, you know, it, it seems like that'd be an easy thing, but after the third week of it, you know, when you're an elite, you know, professional baseball player, sometimes that can get a little monotonous and um, it's a kudos to these guys that they just kept competing, uh, trying to stay ready and it speaks to the culture that Dave's built here is that everybody's hungry to, to go out and do their part and hopefully get us a championship. You mentioned the, the number of arms you guys have to kind of at your disposal. How do you think they've handled, obviously that's meant, you know, different guys in the seventh and eighth and maybe different roles kind of early on. How do you think they've handled kind of the, the differences there? He's, I think Dave is, a, is as bright of a mind as there is in the game. And, you know, he's done a great job of setting a culture here that, you know, when we when we signed Trinan, when we signed Joe, when we signed uh, Jake McGee and, and these veteran players of just getting with them early and just saying, hey, like, we don't have set roles as far as seventh, eighth and ninth. We're going to try to or seventh and eighth. You know, Kenley is our closer and, and that's his role there. But 
Uh, I think what makes us special is that, you know, how many times in the last three years has Pedro Baez been deployed in the sixth against, you know, the opposing team's best three hitters and gotten them out and, you know, swung the game into our favor. Uh, you know, so just to have guys that can get right and left out, trying to put them in the best possible situation. We're not really looking at it as an innings, like this guy pitches in the seventh, this guy pitches in the eighth, because when you take that view of it, you know, if, if you got a guy that gets a lot of righties out and in the eighth, it's his inning and they're all lefties, you know, you're going to be up against it. So, um, you know, Dave's done a tremendous job and Mark's done a tremendous job in his first year here as far as deploying those guys for sure. Thank you. Next question from Pedro Mora. Go ahead, Pedro. <clears throat> hey, Josh, I, I know you weren't here last year, but how would you describe what, what Caleb uh, has showed this, this season in comparison to where he was a year ago and I, in 2018, his, his breakout season. He, he said yeah. repeatedly that he was disappointed last year, but it seems like you guys are increasingly trusting him with, um, with leverage roles. Yeah, it was funny. When I, when I took the job, the first, the first guy that Dave wanted me to reach out to was Caleb. And, and, you know, so we, you know, started that relationship and, you know, I've, I've challenged Caleb in a lot of ways of just, you know, his training, uh, you know, his his uh, not getting too caught up in results, getting into the process, and Caleb has knocked it out of the park, man. He's he's hungry. He's he's supremely talented. He's got a very unique fastball. Uh, you know, he's really worked hard on his slider to you know steal a strike every once in a while, and he's shown glimpses of it eventually being an out pitch. And um, you know, again, he's a process guy that we're trying to develop not only to go out and pitch good tonight, but to be a, you know, a foundation of this bull, bullpen for years to come, you know, the, the kid's a, he's a tough kid. He's an Ohio guy that, that loves to take the ball and loves to compete. And the more guys that we can get in the pen that, you know, are talented and love to compete, the better. So uh, I'm really proud of his work and, and, you know, people don't see the things that he's doing behind the scenes as far as, you know, you know, he goes out and pitches back-to-back -back days and, and throws up two zeros, and he's out there yesterday doing his velo belt and trying to work with Connor to just get more consistent with his delivery. So uh, he's hungry for sure. You mentioned you, you see him in the bullpen for a number of years. Is, is that – you think his upside is, is the, the last man in the bullpen at the major league level? Say that one more time. I didn't understand you. The, you, you mentioned you hope to see him as a, as a cornerstone in the bullpen for years to come. Do you see that as his upside, as like the last man in the bullpen? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the sky's the limit for a lot of our young guys. I mean, when you look at, you know, acquiring a player like, like Bruzdar, I mean, this guy is like a ball of sunshine down there that's just incredible. I mean, we've been just blown away with, you know, not only how well he's thrown the ball – and, you know, he's given up some runs on some soft contact. And, and that's where we've really tried to say, you know, stick with the process. And he's still an unfinished product. Like, he's still working really hard on the slider. And the sky is the limit with this kid. But just the teammate, you know, he makes us laugh down there all the time. I mean, this guy is an absolute stud. So we, we've been so excited to get all the different personalities. And, uh, you know, with Caleb and Bruzdar and Dennis and um, – you know, all these young guys that we got coming up, like it's, it's a good day to be a Dodger, like most days. Thanks. Got a question from Molly Knight. Go ahead, Molly. Hi there, Josh. Um, I'm just wondering, you were obviously a coach, a bullpen coach before uh, the pandemic years ago, and now you're doing the job again. How, what are the biggest differences for you, um, the biggest changes for you this year and how you do Other the job? Other than the mask and the fact that we have to stay six feet apart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it, it, it definitely, the three, the three batter minimum has definitely been a difference. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, the shortness of the, the training period in the summer camp and, you know, um, but, I, but as far as like our process, like with Andrew and Dave and, and Mark, uh, you know, obviously honey's not here anymore, but we, you know, we've got a similar process to, than what we had before. And, and we're trying to constantly look at ourselves and say, how can we do our process better? And, um, you know, and that's what I love about these guys is that we're not satisfied with, you know, going out and, you know, winning 95 games or whatever, like we want to be the best version of ourselves. And we're trying to do that every day. And, and that starts with Dave and, you know, trickles down to, to our whole staff. And, and it's fun to be a part of that. Um, as far as the like deploying guys, like I've been blown away at, at how hungry our young guys are to take the ball because, um, 
you know, sometimes you'll get a guy that might be a, a guy that used to be a starter and, you know, he pitches a, you know, pitches a day and then he wants to be off the next day. Like we've got no egos down there. The guys have been just tremendous uh, as far as taking the ball and being hungry to go out there. And that's a, you know, that's a testament to, to Kenley and Petey and the guys that have been here for years that have shown, you know, them the ropes. Are you still taking a conservative approach to um, getting these guys some innings, just given the, the weird ramp up, or do you feel now that they're built up to where they can go how they normally would? If that's a good question. I would say that um, we're close to having it run like normal. I think that Mark has done a tremendous job of like protecting some guys with, you know, just as far as like four out of six. And, um, you know, we, we try to never throw, you know, guys three days in a row until we get to the postseason. But, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes things happen. Um, but I think that um, right now we're probably a week away from, you know, kind of rolling guys out in a normal season start. I mean, we got a guy like Scott Alexander that, you know, missed the beginning of camp and, you know, we're trying to build him back up. He hasn't thrown back to back yet. Um, he's thrown the ball tremendously. So we want him out there, but, you know, we got to take a long view as far as his health and, you know, kudos to him. He's been in there working his butt off in the training room, trying to get ready uh, to be able to go back to back. And hopefully soon, you know, soon that'll be the case. Thanks, Josh. Thank you.